Those of us who play outdoors find it difficult to get good pictures of our adventures, whether for a diary, a log or even a Christmas card. It does not matter whether we ride horses, climb rocks, go hang gliding or go sailing. We all have the same problem. There is never a camera there when you want one. So we have to cheat. Usually we have to use photos given to us by friends that were taken on the fly, often with a small camera in poor conditions that do not resemble the day we want to illustrate. The inset shows the original picture I used to create the action shot of my boat passing Hurst Castle. It was a chance meeting with a friend on a very grey day. Luckily he took the image at high resolution in RAW, so I had a lot to work with. The first step is to get the best out of the picture, but beyond that, securing a good cutout to paste onto another background is far from easy. Typically, there are edges where the contrast is low against a grey or cloudy sky, fuzzy edges such as the spray, firm edges around the equipment, for example the boat, and fine details such as the mast and rigging. In other circumstances, it could be a climbing rope or the reins of a horse. For years I have struggled to make a success of the necessary selection process. Recently I had a light bulb moment that has made it easier. The key is to recognise that different parts of the image require wildly different selection techniques. So in this short video series I hope to demonstrate how I turned this image into the composite you saw in the title sequence. In this video the computer will be working fairly hard and some sequences take a long time. They will be speeded up and the speed factor will be shown in the bottom left of the screen. After opening our RAW file the processing sequence is a fairly standard one. However we're going to hit this image hard with two applications of tone mapping. So taking advice from some of the official Serif Affinity tutorials we change over to 32-bit processing. Serif recommend changing to the ROM colour space in the early stages of developing. It certainly does seem to give access to a wider range of colours than would otherwise be available. I always like to add a little bit of sharpening and noise reduction to a raw image at this stage. After a final check round the various sliders, one can lighten the mid-tones without much risk of blowing out either highlights or shadows. Now develop the image. I have found that tone mapping will find and amplify any noise present in an image. For that reason I'm using the Nick Collection Define 2 plugin which I find very effective. You can probably see very little effect on your monitor but it does seem to make a useful difference later on. Most outdoor pictures, especially those taken over water, benefit from an early application of the haze removal filter. Yes, I know this is destructive, but I'm certain we are going to need this effect. This is a good point to save the image in a new file which I have labelled develop. I also set a snapshot so that if things go wrong I can quickly return to this point.
Now we're going to concentrate on the spray spreading out from the bows of the boat and see how much we can brighten it. First the background is duplicated and labelled spray, then with that layer selected we enter the tone mapping persona. This procedure is based on one of the official serif tutorials and the link is included in the text. The tone compression is reduced to a minimum and the local contrast slider is pushed well to the right. Immediately the detail in the spray leaps out at you. However, keep an eye on the histogram throughout this process. Once again, we can apply the curves adjustment to bring out the mid-tones without much risk of blowing out the highlights. Now click Apply to allow the tone mapping persona to bake in the changes that have been made. Even though it is a single item, I'm putting the spray layer into its own group called Spray. Then, applying a layer mask to the group. With a fairly hard white brush and high opacity, we can quickly paint across the spray to reveal the tone mapping effect. For the time being, stay away from the edges. Now switch to a less opaque soft brush and retrieve the edges of the spray and the water droplets with a stippling action. Now you can see that the foam is a lot brighter with a lot of detail evident. This is another good point at which to save a snapshot. The next stage is to address the hull. I quite like a tamed HDR effect on equipment such as boats. So we're going to apply the technique described in another official affinity tutorial by James Ritson. The link is given in the text. The background layer is duplicated again and the new layer is labelled Hull. Once again we switch into the tone mapping persona. In this case, the Serif tutorial recommends that the tone compression is not reduced below 75%. The edge contrast can be increased to taste. If it is overdone, it starts to look very artificial. One must also keep a close eye on the histogram to make sure that the highlights do not get blown out. Note that the spray is not affected 
because it is on the layer above the whole layer that we are tone mapping. When you are content, press Apply. The hull layer will be put into its own group labelled Hull. This is because the deep stripe round the hull is not sufficiently blue. Clearly there was not enough light for the camera to pick it up in the adverse conditions in which the photo was taken. Luckily we are still working with the ROM colour space which has more sensitive colour range. In this case, I used the selective colour adjustment. I found that by selecting the black channel and reducing the yellow and increasing the lightness, I could bring out the blue just enough. You would think that the thing to do would be to go for the blue channel, but here I'm demonstrating that it has very little effect. This time the snapshot is labelled Hull and Spray. The Serif tutorial recommends returning to the sRGB colour space because some of the adjustments produce unexpected results in ROM. Bearing in mind that we will be discarding the sea and the sky, I am fairly happy with this image and a levels adjustment shows that the histogram uses just about the full range. The last step in image processing is to save the result. In part 2 we will look at several different ways of selecting. The spray is very bright so selecting highlights gives a good start for that operation. The main part of the hull is a conventional brush selection. For the rest we will create a layer using the pen tool and the brush then use selection from layer. To improve the contrast we switch off the hull layer. Now use merge visible to create a layer on which the selection can be made. Next use tone selection and choose highlights. It has made a good job of selecting the foam around the boat including the droplets of water thrown into the air. Obviously it has not made a very good job of selecting the hull or the rigging and there are one or two other areas in the sea that have been picked up. These are easily removed by using the selection brush set to subtract. The final touch with regard to the foam is to switch to the quick select mode 
which shows where some darker areas within the foam have not been selected. These can quickly be added using a soft white brush. As you can see, I accidentally deselected some of the foam against the hull. I think this is because I forgot to switch off snap to edges. Again, easily corrected with a soft white brush. Now I select the snapshot tab. Here I am deleting a couple of spare channels left over from a trial run. I think that's what Simon Foster would call a gotcha. Now we can create the new snapshot called Spray. In the channels list find the pixel selection. Right click and select Create Spare Channel. It appears at the bottom of the list. Right click on it and click Rename. I called it Spray. That selection has now been saved and can be recovered at any time in the future. Moving on to the hull selection, it is necessary to delete the merge visible layer that was used for the spray, reinstate the hull layer and do a new merge visible to create a new selection layer. This is a conventional brush selection. The important thing is to ignore the mast, the rigging and the guardrails for the time being and concentrate on the rest of the hull, remembering that the spray is already selected. Work carefully round the edges. Now use the quick selection to finish off the bulk of the area away from the edges. The sharp eyed among you will notice that I missed a couple of bits. Well I cheated and corrected them later when editing this video. Another spare channel renamed Hull Plus Spray. Now we create another snapshot labelled Hull Plus Spray. Now Moving on to the mast and rigging, start by deselecting to give a clear start. The pen tool is now the weapon of choice. Choose a bright colour. Set the width to about 8 or 10 pixels depending on the image you've got and choose straight lines. Simply trace the rigging, changing the width if necessary and using the node tool to correct any errors. The 
you may realise that I'm not very expert with the pen tool. It is definitely necessary to change the width of the line for the cross trees and the mast. The stanchions supporting the guardrails are also straight. For the horizontal part of the guardrails, switch to the smart curve pen mode. Handrails with the hull as a background can be ignored as they will have been picked up by the hull selection. All that is left are the odd shapes like the radar. So create a new pixel layer and choose a fairly hard brush, then paint the object in. I have deliberately erred by not going right up to the edges. If you go over the edges then it could generate a slight halo of sky around the selection. Maybe using Grow Selection would be a useful addition to this technique. Once finished, put all the pen and brush layers into a group which I have called rigging. Choose selection from layer and switch off the rigging layer, leaving the selection. For safety, create another spare channel called rigging. Right click on the hull and spray channel 
and click Add to Pixel Selection. Now the entire vessel is selected. Now another series of gotchas. I clicked on the Invert Selection too soon. We have to reverse the Invert Selection before creating the Merged Visible Layer. We also need to deselect in case the Merged Layer would only include the selected parts. Now we have the merge visible layer, is the time to reinstate the rigging and hull and spray selections. Deselect all the layers below the merged visible. Now invert the selection. Press delete. And here is our selection on a clear background. Adding a coloured background and deselecting allows the selection to be revealed in all its glory. There is one further trick gleaned from another serif tutorial about making images pop. Add an unsharp mask layer adjustment. Push the radius right up and set the blend mode to lighten. The effect is adjusted with the factor slider. It is easy to overdo it compare before and after. This would probably have been the best place to add a white balance adjustment as well but I did not do so. This is the image to save and export as a PNG to preserve the transparency. We may not want our vessel going from left to right. Flipping the image of a boat usually works well except for the name. But it may not work with, say, a horse that would have asymmetric markings. So, a new pixel layer and a dab with a paintbrush gives us another selection from layer opportunity. That layer is no longer needed, so it is deleted. Copy flattened. Important. Deselect. Now flip horizontal, paste the name, move and rotate.
Group the name layer and the hull before final positioning. Now we can export the teal image flipped. Now the moment of truth. Open a background. Place the flipped image. Choose a scale that looks right and position so that it works well with the background. In this case I kept the mast away from the clouds. Crop to suit. It was at this point I thought the white balance of the vessel did not match the background. No problem, add a white balance layer clipped to the teal cutout. The image is slightly warmed. The colour change to the spray is not wanted so the effect can be masked out by painting using a black brush on the adjustment layer which in Affinity has its own built in layer mask. Save and export the finished result. As a reminder, the inset is what we started with. 